I got a call recently from a prospect and she said, I know how much I have saved for retirement. I want to know how much other people at my stage in life, at, she was age 60, how much other people who are 60 years old have saved for retirement. Well, thanks to two giant studies, one by Vanguard and the other one by the Federal Reserve, by the end of this video, you'll know how much people in their late 50s and early 60s have saved for retirement. You'll know exactly where you stand heading into your 60s, and you'll know what to do to play catch up before it's too late. But first, my name's Kevin Lum. I'm a certified financial planner, and this channel is dedicated to helping a million people have the tools they need to retire without worry. Now, if you feel unprepared for retirement, you're not alone. In fact, according to the recent study by the Federal Reserve, only 41% of people over the age of 60 feel as if their retirement savings is on track. Now, before I look at the actual numbers, I need to explain something. And that's the difference between an average and the median, because that's going to be very important when looking at these numbers from Vanguard and the Federal Reserve. The average is the sum of all the values in the data divided by the number of values. The median is the middle number, meaning half are above, and half are below. Okay, I know that's a little confusing, so let's make this a bit more practical. Let's say we have five people who are saving for retirement, and we, they just released a study on these five people and the average retirement savings based on their retirement accounts. So the first person saved 10,000, the second person saved 100,000, the next person saved 250,000, the next person saved 500,000, and the final person saved $2 million. So to get the average, we add up all five numbers and we divide by five, right? The number of values and the average retirement savings for this set of five individuals is $572,000. But of course, only one person had a number higher than 500,000, but that one large account skewed the average. So the median number is the middle value. So in this situation it's the $250,000, but this works whether we're dealing with a million numbers or five numbers. So the median is helpful because it helps us know that half of the retirees have under 250,000 and half of the retirees have over 250,000. Keep that in mind as we explore these two different studies that we have from Vanguard and the Federal Reserve. So let's look at the latest data and we'll start with Vanguard. According to the Vanguard study, the average person in their late 50s to early 60s has around $208,000 in their 401k plan. Now, many of the articles I read and even the videos I watch rely on the 401k numbers. The problem is, is that is only one slice of people's retirement savings. Most people also have maybe money in an IRA or a Roth IRA. And so a much larger data set from the Federal Reserve gives us a better picture. Based on their research, the average retirement savings for someone in their late 50s to early 60s is $537,000. So the average 401k balance for someone in that age cohort is $207,000, but the average retirement savings is $537,000. So whenever you read or hear data citing only 401ks, you need to just remember it's incomplete. Now to some of you, those numbers seem rather large, but they don't tell the whole story. Now remember, those are averages and they're skewed by large numbers. So now let's look at what the median balance is from those two studies, because I think that gives us a slightly better perspective. According to Vanguard, the median 401k balance for someone in this age cohort, late 50s, early 60s, is $71,168. So 50% have less than that, 50% have more than that. And the Federal Reserve reports that the median retirement savings for someone in the same age cohort is 185,000. So 50% have less, 50% have more. Now, some of you may be wondering why there's such a large gap between the average and the median. The main reason is that the average is skewed upward by a small number of people with very large retirement accounts. Some of you watching this video have 50,000 saved and others watching this video, you have millions of dollars saved. It just means that these numbers are skewed by people who have saved a bit more. The median, as I said, gives us a more accurate view of what a typical 60 year old has saved for retirement. So if you're in your late fifties or early sixties and you have over 200,000, you're doing better than 50% of the people in your age cohort. Now, some of you at this point are saying, okay, fine, I get it, but how much do I need? Who cares how much other people have saved? How much do I need to have saved 
by 60 years old. The rule of thumb that I often read is something like this. You need 8x your income by the time you're 60. So if you earn $100,000 a year, you need to have saved about $800,000. Now, some of you, when you heard that number, your stomach dropped. But I actually think this overestimates how much you need to have saved. In my opinion, this assumption or this estimate isn't a full picture. It assumes a few things. It assumes a 5% rate of return in retirement, which I think is a bit conservative. An optimized portfolio has been able to do better historically. But two, it assumes your expenses in retirement will be the same as they were when you're working. But for many of you, some of your costs are gonna go down and other costs are going to disappear completely once you retire. For example, some of you are gonna have your mortgage paid off by the time you retire, your kid's college is gonna be paid off, you're not gonna have to pay for commuting anymore, and you're not gonna be putting away any money for retirement savings because you're retired. Furthermore, it assumes a static rate of withdrawal. But if you've watched any of my videos, you've heard me say this multiple times, but retirement spending is not linear. It's not a straight line. It looks more like a smile. It's higher in the beginning when you're doing all the things you dreamed of doing. And then as you age, it begins to go down. And then for some people further into retirement, you see an increase in long-term care costs. So with that in mind, I typically like to estimate about 75% of your pre-retirement cost in retirement. So if you spent $100,000 a year in expenses prior to retirement, I'd estimate about $75,000 a year in retirement. What's a more realistic target than say 8X your income? So let's walk through these numbers. Now, instead of $100,000 a year, it's $75,000. And then we need to back out your social security. So if you earned $100,000 a year, your social security payment at your full retirement age should be somewhere around $2,500 a month. So that's an additional $30,000 a year. So now we have a shortfall of $45,000. If you're married, and let's just assume a minimum spousal benefit, which would be half of your benefit. So that takes the shortfall down to around $30,000 that you need to make up from either pensions or your investment accounts. So that means you need to make up about $30,000, not $75,000 from your pension or your investment accounts. Now, assuming a 5% withdrawal rate, and I have never been a fan of the 4% rule, but we can talk about that in another video. But assuming a 5% withdrawal rate, which I think is possible or something close, you'd need somewhere close to 5X of your income or $500,000 by 60 as opposed to 800,000. Now, $800,000 gives you more room for error. And if you're single, you're not gonna have that spousal benefit. So you're gonna need a bit more saved to keep up that number. Now, of course, your expenses should also be a little less as well. If your household earns 50,000 a year now, a more realistic goal could be 250,000 in retirement savings by age 60, not 400,000. This lower multiple accounts for lower spending in retirement, social security, and a more reasonable rate of return. So let's look at a couple other examples. If you currently earn $75,000 per year, conventional numbers would say you probably want 600,000 in savings by age 60. A more realistic number might be 375,000. If you're currently at 100,000 a year, conventional numbers might say you need 800,000. A more realistic number might be 500,000. This approach provides a more reasonable savings target by age 60, tailored specifically to your situation. You're gonna to need to work through these numbers on your own. Now don't go out and change your retirement plan and tell everyone, the guy online on the internet, he said, I only need 5X, so I've got enough money, I'm gonna to retire tomorrow. I have no idea what your situation is. You should work with a professional and work through those numbers. But what I hope to get across is that many of the assumptions you find online are overestimating how much you need saved for retirement because they're built on top of faulty assumptions. And one of the reasons they do that is they'd rather overestimate than underestimate. But my fear is that many people delay retiring longer than they should because they think they need a much larger nest egg than they really need. Now, some of you at this point are saying, this makes me feel great. I am doing much better than I thought I was doing. Others of you are like, I, even with your new assumptions, I'm still behind. Well, if that's you, if you're behind, don't despair. There's still plenty of time to get your retirement plan back on track. I've seen people in much worse situations then whatever situation you're in, turn it around and be able to retire. Start today making some changes. Create a more realistic goal. And then, if possible, begin to cut expenses to free up money to begin saving aggressively, right? This is the time to begin saving 
all you can to prepare for retirement. Now, some of you, you may have to work a little bit longer. You may have to delay Social Security benefits to create a higher amount of fixed income later in your retirement. And for others of you, you may need to shift your investments towards a portfolio with a higher expected rate of return. One of the things I see happen is that people are afraid they're not going to be able to retire. So they're afraid of losing any money. And so they stick all their money in a CD, but they're not getting nearly enough a higher rate of return to last them through the next 30 or 40 years of the retirement. So you may need to move your money into a more optimized portfolio. And then for some of you, you might need to develop some income streams for your retirement years. Maybe there's a part-time job you could do or something online or you know, teach a class or there's a million different options. If you kind of Google passive income, look online, look on YouTube, there's a lot of different videos giving you ideas of things you might be able to do to create some other income streams. But what I want you to remember or leave with is this is very doable. And the worst thing you can do is to despair and just keep putting off making the changes you need to make. Use this as a wake up call as like, this is the day, right? Commit when you get done with this video. Like I'm going to put in some things into practice today to secure my retirement, create a plan and get started. Thanks for watching. I will link to a video where I actually go in a little bit more in depth into the topic of what to do if you're 50 with no savings. And so I'll link to that video. Um, so you can kind of dive a bit deeper into some things you can start today to help get your retirement plan back on track.